Hello, everybody. <clears throat> this is Gynarchic Awakening here. Uh, this is going to be a video response, uh, more or less, into a commenter who has showed up again and again. And thank you so much for continuing to show support. Um, I, I'm tired, but I do want you to know I appreciate it. It's I'm just I'm out of it. So I'm I'm kind of having my own issues right now. So. I just wanted to, you to know that that's influencing my tone and the way I'm presenting myself and the way I look right now. Uh, <clears throat> and he had he brought something up regarding women uh, controlling other women in a gynergy. Um, and I've, I want to say something first before I get into this. When I talk about these discussions, I'm talking about these discussions within a hierarchical system that is non-anarchistic. Uh, there are some gynarchists who believe that if they set up some kind of like a hive system where each woman was like a bee or whatever, and each woman respected the other woman's absolute autonomy and control over their hives, over their the their submissives, that that could that would be preferable. Uh, it would be better than forming, say, a government or some kind of some kind of hierarchical system of community control. Uh, I'm not going to allege whether this is possible or not. I'm not even going to dispute this because I think it's fascinating. You know, I'm not somebody who, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself an anarchist, but I'm not going, and I, but I'm not going to shoot down an idea. You know, like I said, I told people on this channel, whatever works, works. So if you think you try to put this into practice, let's see what happens in practice. Now, personally, um, in in my opinion, they're the kind of thing I would be gunning for would be a hierarchical gynarchic system at the community level. And uh, why would that be? So when he brought up stuff about like women being submissive to men um, and needing to be reconditioned, maybe per, I, I don't I don't know if the word was reconditioned. Again, I've had a lot on my mind, but possibly held accountable or not allowed into the community. I do think that if women are going to live together in a gynarchic community, I think, again, the title of the video, just for those who know, is how would women hold other women accountable in a gynarchy? In other words, you could also just think of this as how women would control other women in a gynarchy. We've already seen how men control other men in a male-led society. In other words, if you go too far out of line in certain areas, you have police officers who arrest you. Uh, you have people in the military who can shoot you if you do things you're not supposed to do on the field of battle. Uh, like in like certain kinds of insubordination or treachery or what have you. So we've already kind of seen how the men control the other men in society. It's usually through violence. Or the threat of force. Uh, so, but what about in a society dominated by women? Uh, how would why would there need to there would would there what how would that work? So first, I think uh, when we're talking about this, I believe that there has to be what we call a gynarchic social contract. Now, what is that? Well, every there's such a thing as a social contract. When you decide to live in your society, you agree to do certain things, so you obey the social con contract. Unless you're a revolutionary, and this is that doesn't apply. <clears throat> For example, Malcolm X did not obey the social contract. Rosa Parks did not obey the social contract. They took it and ripped it into pieces. So, and I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying it is what it is. But if you are going to live with other women then obviously there's going to be a thought in your head, which is if we're going to live together and if we're going, if our goal is to control men, then we obviously can't be busy being divided amongst ourselves, stepping each other's toes or doing things that undermine each other, each other's authority over men. And I think right here, we do kind of have to establish, like you have to establish some sort of rules. In other words, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable. For example, when you're Controlling men, there's obviously the control over you have over your male. In other words, the male that is submissive to you. 
or the males or other people who are submissive to you. Those people are under your control, so therefore you have that authority within the family unit. Now, obviously, I think that part of any gynarchic social contract would be that um, a woman would have to respect the authority that other women have over their submissives. If there's no respect for that authority and you'd start to meddle with that authority or directly undermine it in some way, that right there is a problem. Um, I've also heard about things like poaching. I, I've heard, you know, I mean, obviously there'd have to be some kind of arrangement that if the person wants to make some kind of exchange, at least to have an open conversation about it. But I think that that's a start. The other part would be is if there are going to be rules for the men in that society, uh, first of all, are the rules that the woman gives to the submissives in the household, are those rules sufficient in order to rule over those submissives, in other words, sufficient to rule over the men? Because if those rules are not sufficient, then that means you need a some kind of political body that can enforce those rules. And the question then becomes, uh, will those political rules that apply to that society, uh, do they apply only to submissives, only to uh, dominant women, or do they apply to both? And how do they apply to both? And do, do, they, do they apply to them in a different way? In other words, are there certain kinds of rules that everyone is being subjected to that are independent of the authority of the woman in the household? And do they in any way uh, come into conflict with that authority? Or is this for public settings? In other words, when you're out and you're interacting with other people, is this about how to enforce engagement between different people? For instance, uh, what is socially acceptable behavior in that society and what is not so what is not acceptable uh, conduct between dominant women or something that is not publicly acceptable for a submissive male to do and also are these what are there going to be punishments involved is there going to be a judicial system involved um, how how far do we take this and also um, in situations where the male is punished or so on and so forth is there some kind of um, <clears throat> is there going to be some kind of compensation to, towards the dominant woman uh, for a situation that involves the law um, overruling her authority? In other words, if if you're going to take away somebody's submissive based on some kind of legal reason that threatens the community, then don't you have to somehow compensate that individual for the support that they're about to lose? I do, I do have concerns about that <clears throat> because in any society, if you push too hard on the citizens, if you take too much from the people, there's going to be backlash. So I think that, and this is just a question here. I think that if you're talking about women controlling other women, I think the first question is it is a bit general I may tr I'll try to find an example for it, but the general question is this. What are the women doing to control the other women? In other words, what is this? what does this control entail? Like, how are they controlling them? In other words, are they, are they putting them in some kind of rehabilitation center or educational center? Are they placing them under the authority of another woman? Are they going to a jail? or a prison or something, or what have you. How exactly is this control being exercised? And then the next thing you have to go over is you have to go over the justification for controlling this individual. In other words, is this individual a danger to the community? Is this individual doing something that can undermine the social cohesion uh, and the very foundation and purpose of that of that gynocentric society. <clears throat> so that's kind of um, th those are the two questions I think you have to answer uh, whenever you're talking about women controlling other women. <clears throat> because if there isn't a good enough justification for it, it's fine. Now I kind of have the feeling that it's like for me. Some people will lean on conditioning. 
here's how I would put it. Okay, here's my example of what would in, what would involve control. I don't believe in in prison systems um, necessarily. I don't believe in like building a prison and sending some there. What I believe in is something called house based incarceration, uh, and it's not exactly what you think it is. So let's say you have a woman in a gynarchy, right? And what she does is she starts um, she starts either she starts either practicing an Abrahamic faith or she tries to distribute the Quran or the Bible into that community. <clears throat> now, there are a few options available to the to um, the community itself, which is there's different ways they control because obviously, if you're spreading a belief system that in, that is going to encourage women to be submissive to men and to backstab other women, you've got a problem. And I think that this is really like the more critical aspect of it. It's, it's controlling. If you're going to encourage dominant behavior in women, first you have to take away the influence that is causing them to portray their other sisters. It's causing them to rally behind these dominant men or be in relationships with dominant men. So if you, uh, if you find this out, that is a basis to, to me, that is a basis because we've seen the influence of these religions. We've seen how they've been used as the justification to take away women's rights in the Middle East, um, throughout history in Europe, uh, as well as other places around the world in which they have that influence. They have control over the minds of the people in the population. So we know full well what they're capable of. And we understand the danger that they represent. And so if some woman is in fact doing this and she's caught doing this, then yeah, there should be some form of punishment. Now, what I think is, I think it's really a simple case of not, I don't believe in like kicking people out of communities. I've heard people talk about this. I think it's a terrible idea because if they find other people, then they can come back and hurt your village. You know, I don't think that's a great idea. The whole kick them out of the village thing. Yeah, that might have worked, what, 25, 3,000 years ago um, or, or longer. I don't remember. But if you're, if you're doing a time pre-male uh, role, maybe that could have been a viable solution in the short term. But those people could just come back vindictive, bring people with them, and then they could burn your town to the ground or do other fucked up shit. So I think part of the social contract would be an agreement by the women uh, uh, to obey the laws of that community. And one of those laws could be that you are not to in any way distribute um, an Abrahamic religious text or to encourage this or spread this stuff in our community. If you want to do that outside of the community, that's your business. But you don't do that in here. You don't do that bullshit. And so if they start you know, handing out the Quran to people, it's like, okay, hold on a second. We don't want you here. We don't want you doing that bullshit. And so what I would suggest is house-based incarceration, because this works for two reasons. First of all, you place that woman under the authority of another woman. In other words, it just becomes a situation where she is, she is in a sense, she is not allowed to go anywhere without being supervised by that individual. So she has to spend her time under a house-based incarceration system. And if she's allowed to go anywhere, she has to be escorted uh, by way of some kind of chains uh, so that she just, so, and you know, obviously gagged or whatever, so that she can't spread that information, that toxicity to the rest of the population. Uh, because it will directly undermine that project. So that is something that can happen. But I think that, you know, when we talk about, like, why do people embrace these? I think there needs to be a deeper discussion about how to avoid putting women in positions where they feel like they want to have a man running everything or provider, because you have to, you can't just look about, look at this from the religious sense. You have to look at it as an economic issue too. I'm going to stop for now. This is part one, but yeah, these are just some of the questions, some of just answering some of the questions on how women would control other women in a gynarchy. Uh, this is definitely something that is not very well talked about. I'm glad that that individual brought that up uh, in the way that he had he had done, that gynarchist. Uh, now I'm going to try to do my due diligence and talk about some more of it. Probably I'm going to upload two videos today. I don't know if I'll finish it, but I'll do what I can.